This video is going to teach you how to model a spur gear for 3D printing applications. This is not for mechanical applications because I will not be going over uh, gear coarseness, which um, basically determines uh, tooth depth. Um, I will be using the addendum dedendum rather than uh, tip diameter and tooth, uh, tooth, depth. tooth depth. There we go. I swear to God, I know how to speak English. Um, so let's get started. Um, start with a new part. I use SolidWorks. You can use Katia, Inventor, um, whatever 3D modeling software you choose to use. And I will be using a parametric approach. So let me go into my equations. Manage equations. And then let's set some up. Um, now I'm going to be using a module of two and that is a standard module a pressure angle of 20 degrees and uh, 25 teeth oops nope uh, everything after that um, comes specifically from equations I will I have a cheat sheet which I will include in the instructable um, if you're watching this on YouTube I will link to the instructable after I post it um, so we start with our diameter which is equal to the module times the number of teeth Uh, then we get the addendum, which is equal to the module times 1. And this basically gives you your um, tip diameter from your reference diameter. And then we will go to our dedendum, which is your module times 1.25. Uh, as I said earlier, I will not be going over um, gear coarseness, so to research into that um, a little more thoroughly, I would recommend going to khkgears.co.jp. Uh, they do have um, three guides on gears called the Gear ABCs, and... They're actually pretty informative. I'm using their cheat sheet right now. So those are all that you really need for this. So we're going to hit OK. And OK. And we're going to go to our sketch. And we're going to start a sketch on the front plane because that's the easiest. Um, create three circles, concentric, because we're going to be using... Um, one as our reference, so let's create a center line out of that. Um, smart dimension, dimension, whatever you want to do, equals our reference diameter. Check. All right, now the addendum is the distance between our reference diameter and, excuse me, our reference, uh, is the distance between our reference diameter and our tip diameter. And our dedendum is the distance between our reference diameter and our root diameter, which I am not using in this video because it's just easier to me to use these. So let's exit our sketch, deselect everything, and go to an extruded boss or base and choose the outer circle for SolidWorks because that's what allows you to uh, encompass everything to extrude use a distance of 10 millimeters mid plane so that we can still sketch on the front plane and be at the center of our part all right now we have a circle that's it's useless um, so now let's go back to sketch on the front plane normal two and what we're going to do is unhide that sketch click on the root diameter circle and convert that. So now that's available for our use. Um, 
Now what we're going to do is bring in a center line because the teeth of a gear and as such the, um, you know, I don't know what to call them, the tooth receptacles, I guess, are symmetrical. And then we're going to go to a three-point arc and make sure the base of your arc is on that center circle. And we're going to mirror that across our center line. All right, um, and then create another three-point arc, oops, connecting these two that is concentric with our root diameter. And because this is creating a, a lofted cut, or our sketch will be creating a lofted cut, we want it actually above our... Um, the surface that we're cutting across just for uh, added security. Okay, so we need these arcs to be tangent to the center of this circle. So give a center line that's coincident with the bottom point on the arc. Select that and the arc and make them tangent. And then connect the arc and the reference circle with a horizontal center line. Um, if you're using SolidWorks, you can select an endpoint on the center line that you've just created, the reference circle and the arc, and make an intersection. If you are not using SolidWorks, because I am not familiar with any of them, really, uh, you can select the endpoint and the reference circle and make them coincident and then you can select the endpoint and the arc and make them coincident but because I'm using SolidWorks I'm going to select all three and make an intersection now what I'm going to do is this is going to define the pressure angle make one endpoint of a center line coincident with your center line and then one point coincident with the intersection. And make sure that your the center line you've just drawn and the arc have a tangent uh, relationship. And then set your the angle between your center line and your tangent line, your pressure angle line, equal to your pressure angle. Well, that did not work. I don't know why that was. There we go. Let's try that again. Equals pressure angle. Okay. All right, there we go. Now, you'll notice that the sketch still isn't fully defined. It, it keeps the same angle, the same pressure angle. But what we need to do is we need to define this width right here. So grab another center line. My mouse would stop bugging out. And make it coincident with one endpoint on the uh, horizontal line you drew. And another point on the reference circle and give that and the horizontal line an equal relationship so that they are always the same length and then we'll draw one more center line from the center all the way out to the edge of your tip diameter circle or your addendum circle and give the cord you drew this one and your new center line a perpendicular relationship and now what we're going to do is set the actual width of the uh, tooth slot I guess um, so we're going to do equals 180 divided by the number of teeth you have um, because what we're doing is 
setting it equal to or because this is the distance between half if it were the distance between full what we would do is um, 360 divided by that but we are not finding the full uh, width of a tooth um, that's called the diametral pitch um, but we're not using that method All right, so now we have a fully defined sketch. We're going to exit the sketch and then create an extruded cut. Oops. I have intersecting geometry. Nope, that's not what I want. Sketch. Let's work on this sketch. Let's trim the entities. There, that should work. Exit sketch. Extruded cut. There we go. Alright, that's going to be mid-plane again, and... Or actually, we can just do through all both, because SolidWorks. Okay, check. Uh, we don't want any internal sharp corners, or external sharp corners for that matter. So we're going to fill up both of those to 0.3 millimeters. Select this, this this and this, these four edges. They are now filleted. Um, it is pronounced fillet. Fillet has one L. Alright, uh, now we're going to do a circular pattern about the edge of this circle and because um, SolidWorks is smart I know that Illustrator, not Illustrator, I'm sorry, Inventor is as well and so is Katia. Not really familiar with any more of them again. So we're going to do equals Number of teeth, that's how many t teeth we want, how many cuts we want as well. Equal spacing. Oops, nope, not that. And we want to make sure that we also include the cut, and not just the fillet. And then what we will do is... 360 degrees, number of teeth, that's how many circular pattern. All right, now that creates the cut. Now, as you can see, this is actually really easy to do. Let's hide this sketch. Um, now, what we can do is we can just go back into equations, manage equations. Maybe I want to change how many teeth I have. Maybe instead of 25 teeth, I want 30. Okay, hit OK. My gear size changes. My, my number of teeth changes. The, everything. It's all linked to the equations.